Taco Bell is not as real as food gets, I would argue. Uh, <laughs> I think everything else is an imposter of Taco Bell. All right, well, I think Taco Bell is the OG, and I all the five-star restaurants are just trying to imitate Taco Bell yeah. with like too much stuff. What's a Michelin star? They ain't even got a crunch wrap. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Episode 82 of From Everyone, I'm here with Sam McBride and Jake Miller. Jake returning for the third time. Sam joining us. I forgot to put my phone on airplane mode. Um, but now we're here. <laughs> we're set. Sam, thanks for joining us. I know we're coming from band practice today, so I appreciate y'all making yeah, of the course. hype. Uh, before we get into all the fun stuff today, I know we got a big show coming up. Uh, we're playing at the Webster. Yes, Jake, I will cue you up here. Who are we playing with? When's the show? Where can people find tickets? Playing with Within the Ruins, Dream Wake, Dream of Scipio, and Burying Point. It is, I believe, next Sunday, the 27th. Beautiful. Um, tickets, we have links up all over our page. It's a big link tree. We'll get you right there to the tickets. Just go to No Eyes Seen on anything, and you'll find it really easy. Yes, and of course, tickets are cheaper through the bank, so there's no service yeah. fees. It's, yeah. yeah, you end up saving a couple bucks. Supporting the homies. Life is good all around. Let us buy tickets for our friends. Um, Hell yeah, brother. Life is here. Uh, the Cavern is recently out. Uh, so this is a music video we did together. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of talking to here. I wanted to start with what you guys remember about the day because it was not the most fun day of shooting that we have ever had. It was great. But yeah, not always great. What do you guys remember the most about it? The fucking heat. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, I just remember running outside between every take and stripping down as little as we could be wearing. And just being <laughs> yeah. like, all right, cool off for 10 seconds. <laughs> just right on this community of houses. Just yeah. get it as yeah, naked as we possibly could <laughs> in public without drawing too much attention. <laughs> yeah, and of course it sucked because like uh, we were trying to film like at night was the original plan for this thing to go in the night somewhere. This place wasn't available overnight and we also decided we didn't really want to film <laughs> from midnight to 5 a.m. if we could avoid it. We have lives and that would have complicated them considerably. Uh, so we had to cover up all the windows this place. So instead of just being like a hot cabin with no AC, now it's a hot cabin with no AC and no windows. Yeah. So it was just like the perfect recipe for bad. It seemed like, yeah, I, don't, I give you guys so much credit for surviving that day. It feels like it would have taken a lot of like mental fortitude. The to only that way it that it could have been worse is if there wasn't those trees doing shade. We just had direct sun yeah. right on us the whole time outside. Either. Yes. That would have been worse. Or if you were a jacket band. Yeah, if you were yeah. still in the jacket era, I feel like we were like dressed yeah. for heat and it wasn't yeah. as yeah. bad. Definitely. But the jacket era, I did a video with Chain Twist and it was a similar setup of like a hot thing. And that was the day they were excited. They were all going to go like Under Armour, like sci fi, <laughs> like cool turtleneck, like vibe. And it just fucked up. I <laughs> bet they so looked bad. sick. Wrong time, wrong place. <laughs> it looked so sick. It all worked great, but it didn't feel great for them. That's, that is one <laughs> thing I was very sure of. Um, how do you guys survive a day like that? Like, for me, it's kind of like it's my job. I kind of have to, but that's something you like opted into. Like, it feels like it'd be very easy to like back out and quit there. It's the same thing for me. It, it's, it feels like it's just a job to get done. We're there for yeah. the day. We're here to shoot a music video. And uh, it doesn't matter if it's hot, cold, whatever you got to go through, get it done. And there always is something to go through. I feel like there is no video set that's like a happy, easy, good day. Like yeah, I wish that yeah. was the case. Like I try my best to make them all good and easy. You do a good job but, about that, but there's always something that's gonna come up. And it's just I can't like cool it that is place. what it is. Yeah, not everything is in your control. <laughs> no, uh, unfortunately, a lot of this video was out of our control. It felt like the whole time. Yeah. Uh, and the story that comes to mind here is this other location we had. So we ended up finding this location like a week before we shot where we just needed a cabin kind of last minute. And thankfully, this one worked out and the host was a character in herself. Uh, shout out <laughs> to my queen, <laughs> my beautiful princess. I but, forgot about that. She's a real one. Yeah, and she's a realist. I got to send her that video, actually, yeah. when it comes out. She like has asked me many times and like followed up with me since the shoot. You should send year. her a ticket to the dream. Should. <laughs> I don't think she'll come, but it's worth the shot. It, absolutely. I am so on board with it. <laughs> we should. I will happily pass along her information. Oh, my God. Um, but we had this other location all ready to go. Uh, I get on a call with this guy, and it was this, like, beautiful, like, like chapel with, like, trees inside. Like, do you remember anything about this place? Yeah. Right? It was gorgeous. It was, like, the coolest place ever, and it was up by you, thankfully. So yep. it was, like, the one time we were all going to go see Sam's Neck of the Woods instead of making him come all the way down here. Oh, I was so ready for it. It was going to be beautiful. It was available all day. We even talked him into, like, overnight stuff. Uh, and so I get on a call with this guy. Uh, it was a big, like, wedding venue. And I get on a call with him, and I was meeting, like, expecting him to, like, get on the call and be like, no. But we get on the call, and, like, it's, like, a big, like, hour, hour and a half call. And he starts with, like, so what are you doing? So I tell him we're shooting a music video, and I try and justify it. And then he starts going, like, is this like scary music? Like, do I do I need to be? Is this like bad for our brand? And I was like, no, actually, it's kind of like about life. Like, it's about big things. Like, it's not murder and kill everyone. Like, we yeah, can do yeah. this at a wedding venue. So we got talking. Uh, we get talking through all the like the fog permits, all the different scheduling issues. 
Uh, and then right at the end, I'm like, oh, so by the way, here's the number we had in mind. It was a couple hundred bucks. And the guy kind of laughs at me. And I was like, oh, this ain't, this ain't great. <laughs> um, he laughs and goes, dude, it's $5,000 for the afternoon. <laughs> and we're like, no. What the fuck <laughs> is this? So, yeah, I have no idea to this day. Like, it must have just been, like, an intern who fucked him royally somehow. Yeah. But, like, I, I wish that it worked out. And the guy was, like, kind of nice, like former like metalhead self-identified kind of guy yeah yeah so he was like i'll work with you and it was like there's there's not much you can do with that unless you're gonna go down like more than half there's not really much we can do like a 95 percent off yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) Yeah. we can talk oh my god but it was it was nuts Uh, yeah it feels like the cavern worked out and thankfully it was like a simpler shoot than the other two so like despite being so hot yeah it was survivable and i think i really liked there's a certain like claustrophobia of us all being close to the smaller little place that we ended up in that I think kind of fits the vibe better. You know, I think shit like that, it happens how it's got to happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe it turned out better for us having that situation. It definitely, yeah, it was a much different video than it was going to be. Sometimes yeah. the cheaper place is the right fit. <laughs> yes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Especially for some heavy ass song like this. Like, it works. That works right. perfect. And I think it's like a nice, like, contrast the other two right like moonglade had some parts of this but it was a more like i don't know structured video yeah. and this kind of feels like an old classic like banger like just old-fashioned like just do it how we did in the 2000s yeah. kind of get thing. in a room and rock out <laughs> absolutely yeah. yeah which i feel like is a much more fun shoot for you guys than green screen stuff i feel like green screen stuff is like almost underwhelming for a band it's fun watching the green scene green screen stuff but uh performing i feel like there isn't as much you can do with it yeah yeah in your head, are you trying to, like, imagine where you're going to be? Or is it just, like, go hard? Like, how much are you mentally being, like, like with Lyra, how much are you mentally being, like, I'm in an Arctic wasteland right now? And how much is just, like, I just got to play bass? I honestly am thinking about being on stage and that kind of thing more than I'm thinking about where I am. thinking about getting in the best performance space that I can, which, to me, is that. So I was thinking I'm just on stage somewhere playing a show. Interesting. And then it was like, all right, I can trust Peter to deal with yeah. the Arctic <laughs> wasteland and make all that stuff work. But I was just like, I'm going to jam out like I'm at a show, but not move my feet. That's <laughs> exactly. the best. Is that kind of your Yeah, exactly. Too? Yeah. Anytime I'm playing, whether it's a video or whatever it is, even practicing, practice I'm playing early. like I'm at a show. Yeah. Interesting. I feel like, do you guys practice that hard normally? Like today, were you practicing that hard? Is it like a full speed practice? They do. I don't. <laughs> I just stand there and play. I got licks to play. Like, fuck that. <laughs> Fuck that. I was hung over today. I was standing still. <laughs> I'll, I'll go like 50, 75% in a practice just to make sure I can play everything you can accurately it. while I'm performing at the sure. same time. Interesting. Yeah, I feel like I'd be much more on the Jake side of like, I'll do it later. And then it would, I feel like it would fuck me personally. Like, if it works for you, it oh, works for you. But. I'm not saying it's the best idea. I'm not like saying everyone should do this, but it's what I do. <laughs> I'm just being honest. <laughs> we love an honest kid. <laughs> I don't even look at them. I'm looking at my pedal board, (laughs) fucking facing my cab in, like, the opposite corner, just like, let me get these right. Which is the reality of most bands, right? I think, like, y'all are about as close of a band as as exists. Like, I feel like there's a lot of bands that have, like, a ton of member changes, or it's, like, they really, like, are genuinely not friends offstage. I feel like you guys are about as close as bands get. And even then, it's funny. It's like, yeah, the reality is, it's like, you're kind of in your own world. Like, it's Uh, it seems like practice would be just this huge party that's always raging. It's like... Yeah, there's some funny moments, but, like, most of it is, like, yeah, we're off in our corner <laughs> looking yeah. at our battle yep. points. Making sure, like, the one lick we forgot to learn or something, relearning it real quick to ourselves. Like, yep. stupid shit like that. Yep. Lots of licks to learn now. So we got the new album coming out is the new, the big news here. Uh, when does the album officially come out? January, January 10th. January 10th. Yes. Beautiful. Uh, I need to pause. I'm going to turn that fan off, and I haven't found a good moment to do it, so I'm just going to... Do just it. gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to talking about <laughs> the magic of editing. Yeah, Bink, and he's back. <laughs> Bink, we're back. Fans off. It should sound a little better now. Uh, beautiful. January tenth. What is the album called? <laughs> Impermanence. <laughs> Impermanence. January tenth. Streaming everywhere. Uh, this just got announced last week. As or <laughs> yeah, last Couple week. Days I guess <laughs> as as this comes out last week ish as recording it. I guess a little week in advance. But <laughs> that's the other magic of editing and magic of timelines. Uh, beautiful. What makes the album special? Why should people go listen to it? Why is it worth listening to? I think there's a lot of variety on it, and there's a lot of heart in it. And, you know, I think that is... There's a lot of bands that release albums where it sounds like one song the whole time, and they're just doing what they think is the best thing to do. And we just wanted to do what we would want to hear. You know, we want to put out what we would want to hear in the world. 
Yeah. So. And this is like your first release with the band? Uh, yeah, I was with the Omen single, but that's a single. That's not like a full yeah. body of work. But uh, yeah, so this is my first full drop with the band. Beautiful. Stoked to hear that. And Sam, how does it compare to like the, <laughs> the history of the band, right? Like if we've, uh, at this point, no, I've seen, has had, been, put out some records. You guys have been through this process before. Like you're kind of familiar with what it takes to put out a record. How does this compare to it? Yeah, what does make this one different from the, the past ones? I think we took more time with this one, um, focusing on the writing and making sure everything was exactly where it wanted to be. I think we were more comfortable yeah. uh, with the process. In what way? Uh, just, just as far as, uh, like, sorry, I'm blanking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay. The process like does get easier over time. I'm like curious, yeah, like what about it gets easier? Is it like t- being comfortable with the producer? Is it comfort in the studio? Definitely comfortable comfort? getting into the uh, into the studio. Uh, working with this, uh, we were working with Wiseman again. Mm-hmm. Um, that was my second time working with them. So me personally was just more comfortable working with that. Um, just trust built up there. Yeah, exactly. Instead of meeting exactly. someone and shit. What does he do well in the studio? Like, I'm always looking at these other, like, professionals and being like, what can I learn from them? How do I get better at my job? And someone like Wiseman is like, yeah, that's someone I can absolutely learn from. Like, what is he? He's like a machine. He's just so efficient. Interesting. He's, like, quick with everything and just, like, there's never a moment where if any of us are like, "Ah, I don't know where this should go, there's never a moment where he's like, oh, I don't know. He's just always like, it can go here. Here's the destination. You know what I mean? And he'll kind of point us in that direction and stuff like that. But it, uh... Yeah, it's nice. You know, he, like I said, very efficient. I would say that's the best word for him. He is going in there and he's gunning shit down. Efficient. He always has an idea. If you need something, like, he's on it. That's the benefit of someone, yeah, with a rapport of records like him. It's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, he's been there. He's done the thing. And I think that's the challenge of being a producer is like, I guess music videos are similar ish, where it's like, until you have that thing under your belt, like, it's hard to validate that, like, you're capable of the thing. And then once Mm -hmm. you're someone like Wiseman who has his body of work under him, it's like, there is no question at all about what he can do. I can go on Spotify and (laughs) figure that out just (laughs) five seconds pretty easily. It's very easy to trust someone like that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and I think that's something I'm always, like, trying to be mindful of is, like, how do I, yeah, make myself more trustful? And so by doing more ideas, by pursuing more ideas, I can then become more reliable when your idea is, like, when you have the crazy thing of, like, can he do this? It's like, well, he's on these other ten things. And it's about me. For me, it's just, like, continually trying to push that, like, boundary of, like, what is doable, what is capable. Yeah, yeah, here. definitely. Um, and Lyra felt like a really, like, big step there. Like, I feel like I've done other things like that before, but somehow that one felt like it has gotten a lot of, like, traction since then in terms of, like, people reaching out being like, oh, we like that. Can you do that for us? Kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, Hell uh, yeah. Which is, of course, a really nice a nice feeling. Uh, so yeah. I appreciate you guys trusting me with that one. Yeah, and of course. It, put it out in the world. Uh, I think it came out, that one came out amazing. You yeah. Know? Especially, like, you're sitting there in a green screen in a garage, and you're <laughs> like, I don't know what the fuck this is going to do. You know, you're thinking... It'll come out pretty good. And then it comes out great. And you're like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> we filmed that one on the same day as Moon Glitter. Part of it. Yeah, whatever. Uh, and I think back, there was a moment where, like, Luke's dad came outside and was like, what is this? What are you like, doing? Oh, it's going to be. And I, yeah, I like to go back to that moment of, like, yeah, try to convince that guy of what that thing would have become would be a really <laughs> challenging yeah. thing that all of us wouldn't have quite known. But somehow, like, having a person, like, represent that to me has been, like, a really poignant memory of, like, mm-hmm. Damn, yeah, that thing did This come man doesn't way. really know, but they have an idea. This guy doesn't have any fucking clue what's going on. Like, yeah. <laughs> but we all learn, we all grow, and yeah, thankfully sometimes it works out. <laughs> <laughs> Things get better from there. Um, what you call it? Um, album is here, uh, working with Sean and Chris. Uh, I know Sean and Chris were both involved in this, so Chris did a lot of the production and Sean did it. Where does that like delineation happen? Where is, I feel like on the, all these video credits I'm writing, yeah, the two of them. What is, yeah. what is one responsible for? What is the other responsible for? Sean mostly did vocals. Chris mostly did instrumentals, but it's not like a one-to-one. I think there were a couple little things we tweaked with Sean, a couple little vocal things we tweaked with Chris after. So it wasn't like a clean split between that, but... It was mostly yeah. along those lines. We figured go with an instrumentalist for instrumental stuff, go with a vocalist for vocal stuff. It seemed like the best way to get the best out of everyone involved. You uh, know, is that how you would do the next record? Is that like did it did it work this time? Would you still split it? Um, uh, I don't know if that's the route we're gonna do because I think it worked well and we came out with a really good product. But it was definitely more money into it yeah. to do it that way than the alternative, and so. It's hard to say at this point. Maybe, maybe not. 
That was a beautiful segue that you're not even aware of. Where one of the things I've been thinking about a ton is how, like, where to spend money in this thing. And ultimately, yeah. like, yeah. Uh, money sucks. And I, like, I wish it was more openly talked about because it feels like we're all, like, yeah, I feel like I keep all of it inside. And it's, like, we're all doing it. Like, the money that I spend to run my business, the same as you guys, like, a camera and a cab are roughly equivalent expenses. Sure, like, they're sure, both yeah. annoyingly yeah. expensive. And, like, yeah, there's different <laughs> varieties of, yeah, degrees there, whatever. But it is the same game they're playing of, like, we have X amount of dollars. If we buy a cab, then we can't pay for advertising. If we buy a new guitar, then we have less money for the studio to use the guitar. Like, there's yeah, always yeah. these trade-offs. Uh, for me, the issue has been, like, the podcast versus, like, the business. Like, there's things that sure. I want for this of, like, uh, yeah, more mics to do a full band, like we were talking about yeah, earlier. Yeah. And it's, like, I would love to upgrade the mics, but it's hard to put money into this where it's, like, I have this other thing that I is the priority. And, like, the yeah. podcast is great. I'm happy that it is, yeah, continuing to be a thing. But I don't know how much I can spend money into it when I should put money into this other thing that's more valuable mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. I feel like an album is like the highest degree of this challenge. Of like there is creating the album, there's promoting the album, there's all the people like me involved, there's the Sean's of the world, there's the Jays of the world who I assume is involved in the back end of yeah. this. Like yeah. what how do you begin to manage like where does the money go? Like how much are we uh, choosing to invest in the audio versus like the marketing? Like where do we try and put the most money? What's the priority? How do you try and make sense of all these like variables and trying to figure it out? It's hard, you know. I don't think with a lot of those things, I don't think there is a right answer. Yeah. It's just kind of what you choose to prioritize, and sometimes you find out you made the wrong priority, you know what I mean? But it's just trial and error, and you figure out this is what's important, this isn't. And, you know, there's four dudes in the band. You know, you're talking about a camera, but it's just you buying that camera. Yeah. You know, if someone's really down bad and can't put up money, you know, someone might have a little extra this week and might be able to be like, you know, I'll cover you on this. Just get it back to me when you can, you know. Sure. There's ways you can kind of fudge your way around it and figure shit out, but it uh, definitely some things. Struggle. Definitely some things we figure out on the fly and some yeah. things that are more planned ahead of time, yeah. Yeah. I, I come back to this issue of, like, the sooner I can put money in, the better that – the more that money is worth to me. And that's where mm -hmm. I always get caught up on this. Of like, if I'm going to buy the new guitar, if I'm going to buy the new cap, if I'm going to pay extra for the studio session, like whatever that thing is now, I should do it now and get the most time for that thing to give me a return. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's the yeah. other place that I get caught up here is like, I don't want to spend myself broke. Like, I understand that there's a very real consequence to spending here. But it's like, yeah, if I, in the, uh, with photo, like I just got some new lights. I just got this new guy above Hell my head. Yeah. Uh, and there's another one coming. And so, yeah, we'll have four foot tubes instead of two foot tubes. And that's great. Um, and to me, that was one of those of like, I don't really want to buy them now, but I, I've needed them for a while. I'm going to need them for a while. If I'm going to use them for my whole life, then I might as well have start them now. Start now, yeah. To start, yeah, start that process. And I feel like for you guys, there's a similar thing of like, yeah, when do you put the money in the process? Do we save it all for the marketing at the end? Because there's some argument of like, if we go broke in the studio, then like, great, we have a cool thing, but no way to get it to people. Yeah. Like, this, yeah, the budgeting here, I guess what I'm trying to get out of like, yeah, how do you prioritize this? How do you like begin to make sense of what is worth spending money on and where do we, yeah, not spend money to buy onto the show kind of thing. I'll give you a really good example that we have going right now. With everything we're doing for the album, our van is busted right now. We're not, we just don't have a van to travel. <laughs> this has been a great saga every time you've been on. Yeah. <laughs> Every four and to six months, there's a new van. And there. not, and it's like, we were like, we can buy a new van or we can promote this album. Yep. And we made the decision that we're probably better off release the album, and then we can get the van to then go around and play that. So certain things, it makes sense because sequentially you need to do them in a certain order. Yeah. If we got the van and couldn't promote the album until next year, what the fuck are we going to go play? It doesn't <laughs> matter that we got the van. Fair. You know, yeah, so yeah, yeah. some things it's very clear, and you're like, all right, this is the order we got to do it in, and yep. that is what it is. Some things it's a little more up in the air, and it's just like, <laughs> I don't know, I guess we're doing this. You got the money, I got the money, let's drop it now. <laughs> we'll fucking figure it out when we got to, yeah. Exactly. Is there like a concrete accounting person? Like who's like the quarterback of that for you guys? Uh, probably Caleb would be okay. the, at the helm, but everything is talked about yeah. amongst the members equally. That's always the, the challenge is getting everyone to the exactly. table. Yeah, the exactly. Yeah. No, nah, we're pretty good about everyone being involved with that stuff, but I would definitely say Caleb kind of takes the helm with gotcha. that kind of end of things. Gotcha. Hell yes. And with the album coming out, uh, obviously we got the shows coming up to promote it. Uh, what else are we doing to promote the album? How else do we get the word of an album out? Like what else What else goes into making this thing work? Ain't that the million dollar question? Yeah. Uh, lots of content, it seems. Lots of play around. Ripping the TikTok, TikTok game? Yeah, stuff like that. Uh, 
consistency with stuff, you know, actually getting out there and meeting people. And I feel like if someone just sees you post a video or check out my album, they're less likely to do it than if they meet you in person and have a real yep. connection with you. And then they're like, I don't want to check this out because some guy on the internet told me to. I want to check this out because my friend made it and I want to support them. And so I do really feel like the best way to go about it is by genuinely getting out and meeting people. But, you know, that's a smaller market than the amount you can reach throwing shit online. So you got to find a blend of those two things. Absolutely. Yeah, how much are you playing the TikTok game? How much are you like, making the short form content? How much are you... Yeah, do it the old-fashioned way. That is something we're planning to get into and be better about. Yeah, right yeah. now, I would say poorly. <laughs> poorly. This is the time to do it poorly, yeah. There's, yeah. A, there's a real crunch time coming up where it'll need yeah. to be done a little more efficiently. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, that's definitely something we're trying to get on, but we do terrible at that right now. None we of us all, are big social media guys. We all hate that shit. Like, leave me alone. If I'm not, like, doing something actively, I don't want to sit there on my phone and, like, oh, someone commented on my post. Eat shit. I don't care. Yep. <laughs> it, it, I feel you 100% and I think that like this show has helped me like break that in my brain just a tiny bit of like it doesn't take as much as we think it does to like make yeah. a weekly thing yeah. of like today in practice you guys could have each recorded your own like set yeah. and it's like then you have 10 clips a person of just yeah pick a chorus here and there and yeah. it's like you would have been done for just takes for a, a little extra effort oh, yeah. yeah, a fraction yeah. of an effort yeah. and like yeah. watching it back like you don't have to watch it back at all like you know the you set. know what like, you play just, just find cut the 10 it and seconds post it. It doesn't have to be a minute. Like I think, uh, I think we get caught up. Me like, like, I always joke. I'm gonna talk myself out of a job one of these days. Cause like I don't think you need me for most of these things. It's like I think you need me for the music video for the one like central egg of this thing. But it's yeah. like all the other shit. It's like the little things. Do it not yourself. So like save money, save time. Don't waste your time on me. Do it like yeah. Or find someone who's up and coming. who's like still learning and wants that practice. But it's like do it all on your iPhone. Like that's the stuff that is better received anyway. Where I think yeah. in the world of TikTok, it's like. TikTok to me is thrive because people want like real and genuine and not that everything on there is real and genuine, but there is of like course, a, an intimate connection that happens when I'm filming myself and once that I'm the one putting the camera, holding the camera and we all recognize the iPhone, we all recognize the perspective. Like now I am in your living room when I'm watching you do your TikTok dance. Like it's much different than if I come in with my camera and film your TikTok dance, then you're just yeah. like a weirdo <laughs> dancing in his face. But like yeah, yeah. when there's the human touch. And it's like, I think that's the key. And this, obviously, I'm also talking to myself here. It's like, I should film myself editing all day. I should have fucking course, my phone up right here while filming me do this. I, I like, mean, there's a world where you could just fucking stream a little part of it, you know? Put up a little 10-second thing like, oh, we're doing a podcast, live stream it, and then fucking drop the other one. Later. There's a million things that we could all do better on that wave, yeah. but it's just like. <laughs> it's about how much time and energy uh, you're willing to put into it honestly it yeah, is yeah. and there's also something to me that is like lame about doing that and yeah. I don't I like I want to write music I don't want to be on social media doing a fucking random ass repeated bit that 20 other people have done today eat uh, shit I'm trying to write I, music I, like I'm not an internet personality I'm, I'm just trying to write music I'm and play it. exactly <laughs> eat shit but also if <laughs> everyone who's doing that thing is not eating shit and I'm still here eating shit because I won't do that I'm thing. I'm the exactly. one eating shit. Then it's yeah. like, yeah, which way is the shit flowing in this yeah. shit stream? Yeah, yeah. no, exactly. You're 100% right with that. That's where I, yeah. Uh, I was having this conversation with my friend about, uh, like, premium Twitter, whatever it's called, X, whatever yeah. the fuck, the X plus, whatever, whatever the fuck that thing is called. I deleted Twitter. It's, once they changed the it to move. X, once my app updated, I said <laughs> goodbye. I'm uh, not, I don't need that in my life. I still have it. I feel like I use it poorly, but I use it a little bit for, yeah, for this and for scrolling and, yeah, getting news that I didn't want to see anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Life goes on. <laughs> um, but it was the same thing of, like, I feel like I, he was saying that I should just, like, spend the $8. It's like, it does benefit your reach. Like, your stuff will go. And to me, it was like, I just feel lame. <laughs> I don't want the blue check. Like, if, if It's I like could, a sign of shame. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, but it oh, should it be. Like, I spend it so be. much more money on so much dumber things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if this is an $8 investment that does help my business, it's like, I spent fucking hundred dollars per microphone on these, and these probably didn't help my business as much as eight dollars a month. This is a whole year. Yeah, it's like did one year of Twitter Premium help me more than this microphone? Probably yes. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> and what you're not going to do it because some internet troll is going to make fun of you for. <laughs> and no one will. Exactly. Yeah. It'll be me exactly. Just be myself. you and your, maybe like one of your boys one day will be like, "Damn, you paid for that shit." And yeah. like you'll laugh about it together and move the fuck on. Like no I, one's really going to care. And I think it's the same thing for the band on social media. It's like the reason you didn't film yourself at practice today is because you didn't want one of your guys to be like, "Yo, what the fuck <laughs> are you doing?" Yeah. It up, brother. Yeah. 
But it's you the missed same that shit. lick because you were busy fucking with your phone. I don't understand it. Like it doesn't make sense to me. Like I, I would like to believe that I am smart enough and like brave enough <laughs> to overcome this thing. And part of the show is like an exercise in that of like, yeah. well, I kind of now have to put out clips every week because I'm having you guys here, and if I have you guys here and then don't post it, then we just wasted all of our time and yeah, like yeah. fucking role played some weird ego shit. Like it <laughs> kind of has to be a thing. For sure. And so it's a way to like force myself into it. And yeah, I. It feels like it has done a lot for me, and I, yeah, I, I wish everyone else could find the same like loophole to get the content into their life and like make a way to get themselves out there and make it happen in a way that feels like organic to them, and yeah. a way that feels comfortable. And this does feel organic. Like I feel like I'm just talking to my friends, and then it's future Peter's problem to figure out like yep. what part of this goes on the internet. Yeah, and yeah. it's nice versus sitting here and like in the past I've tried like here's. For beginner photography tips kind of thing. Uh -huh. And that just is like, who, uh, what is this for? Like, I don't know. And this feels genuine. It's like, oh, this is for me. And everything yeah. else is like, kind of has to be. But it it's at least taken care of. And I don't have to be in this yeah band practice room going, fuck, I really should have recorded that today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. Um, are you, yes, are you hoping to get into that? Is that like part of, part of the framework I, of the plans here? Yeah. For, personally, I want to do a lot more stuff just for the rest of this album release yeah. and really get into it. But even past that, I want to personally be kind of upping my own name in that world because mm, not to be a hater, but I'm better than most of these motherfuckers doing that shit. So, mm -hmm. like, it's just a waste to not, and I got to. Uh, the amount of... <laughs> I, I'm glad you said that because, yeah, it's not the most flattering thing in the world, but it is honest. Yeah. And it's very real. And like, I'm the same way. I've like, seen motherfuckers and they're faking the whole fucking lick. And it's like, man, like you don't even look like you know what you're doing. There are so many like photography reels that I scroll past. And it's like, boy, if you knew how much easier I could do that, then you just did it. But we don't. But we don't because they're the ones on TikTok. And yeah. it's like, all right, well. Touche. Yep. You win. I either got to do it myself or stop bitching. Yeah. And I'm probably not going to do either one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real sad truth here. <laughs> but fuck us. I guess we'll, we will learn someday and figure Cheers it out. Cheers to that. Um, <laughs> beautiful. Uh, the other piece of Lyra that I've written down here that I guess is a lot less funny to bring up now, um, but I <laughs> should have brought it up in, in a moment in conversation. Uh, the Northern Lights were here like two weeks ago, and everyone was all talking about them. And I was like, bitch. I made them. Like, why were we this excited about the ones that I did? Crazy. That's crazy. I went out there, and I was looking at them, and I really thought about taking my guitar out and taking a little <laughs> social media video and just being like, real Northern Lights. And then it was like 10 at night, and I was like, no, I don't want to put an actual outfit on. I'm in, like, shorts and, like, <laughs> a fucking undershirt. It would have been so much better in shorts than an undershirt. Yeah, just sitting there like, oh, whatever, in, like, a lawn chair with a beer or something ridiculous. <laughs> just Max Alabama. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother. Did you see the Northern Lights? The worst part is I was working in Vermont like that whole time that I was happening. Too cloudy to see them. Damn. Yep. That would be the uh, I was working overnight too. I'd like looking out while I'm driving, like <laughs> trying to see them. Nothing. <laughs> that sucks so bad. Like I would think Vermont would be like the place to be. Yeah, but no. nothing. And driving especially is like it's just taunting you. Yeah, like you're spending your whole night going. It's gonna in 15 what minutes. Are the, it's yeah, clear. I'm gonna get there. Like <laughs> it's one of these times, there's gonna be no clouds, and I'm gonna see that shit. <laughs> That's so nah. funny. I got screwed. <laughs> you got the short end of that deal. At least we got the virtual version of it. Yes, but, exactly. Yeah. We played under the northern lights. We don't need to see. Exactly. We did. Just tell everyone it's real. Yeah, tell it's real. I, you didn't do anything to that video. You just went up there. to Antarctica with us. Like, no big deal. It wasn't that bad of a road trip, to be honest. We took the van. <laughs> yeah, we took the yeah, van. Yeah. We it took... only broke down four times. That's why it's out of commission now. Yeah, because <laughs> we took it all the way down there. <laughs> round trip to Antarctica trip. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one that kills all the vans here. Beautiful. Um, Sam, one thing I like to get into here uh, that I've already gotten into with Jake, uh, so you now I'll put you on the spotlight here, uh, is like your journey into music. Uh, so I'm always curious Ooh. about like, uh, the mental vision I always have is that you guys were all like five years old with like spoons and pots and pants and like already starting <laughs> rhythm and like figuring that out. I know it's always like not that glorious. Sometimes we started in orchestra. Sometimes we started in like, yeah, piano in kindergarten. Like, yeah, what was your venture into this? So I'd say the start for me was probably just watching my sisters coming home from like piano lessons. Okay. How and old not were like time? just. I was about three years old. Oh, damn. Okay. I was really young. <laughs> so yeah. it was that. It, yeah, it was funny you say that. Um, <laughs> I was just watch them, and I'd be like, I idolized them at the time. I was three years old. I had no friends. I, <laughs> I looked up to them. 
So I'm, I'm just watching. Why did you have to qualify loving your sister? <laughs> that feels like a very normal and healthy thing to do. Uh, it be like that sometimes. You know? It do. It do. It really do. <laughs> but but uh, our uh, goddesses came home. From yes, the ab- absolutely. Uh, and I was just watching them play piano, and I was like, I could do that. Yeah. So I just sit down and uh, like copy what they were doing, and uh, my parents saw me, and they're like, "This kid's a prodigy." We got to get him into, into lessons now, too. So, so I started piano lessons at like three or four years old. How much older are your sisters? Uh, two and a half and five years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I picked up piano lessons, did that for five years before I got tired of it. And I was like, this isn't cool anymore. Little piano like, boy over yeah, here. Yeah. Hell yes. <laughs> Elton John. Hell yes. But uh, yeah, I got sick of it. I didn't want to do it anymore. I didn't like the recitals. I didn't like getting up in front of people, funny enough. Uh, so I quit, took like two or three years off of music, and it took going over to my friend's house and picking up Guitar Hero to ignite that spark again. And uh, that's all I asked my parents for for years was <laughs> like, can, I, can we get Guitar Hero this year? And uh, they'd always say no. And one Christmas, they finally got me a book to teach myself guitar. <laughs> and my dad gave me his guitar to practice on. And uh, it was pretty much history from there. He Damn! Said, Fuck that shit. Be yep. a real guitar hero. Yeah. It's so funny that like they said no to guitar hero because they were convinced it wasn't gonna stick. They didn't want to waste their money. So they give you like the worst version of that, and even that stuck. And you'd yeah. be like, I was right. From I like, would have done Going back to my earlier points, like they should have gotten a guitar hero sooner. Honestly, <laughs> if they were yeah. gonna invest money, in it, they should have done it early. Yeah. And gotten more return. More but out of their but money. to be fair, if they had got me guitar hero, I probably would have never picked up the real guitar. I would have been like. That's too hard. I'm just, I'm just pressing these plastic I don't know. buttons. That was yours, Path, right? I only got into actually playing guitar because I played Guitar Hero. Fair so enough. I feel like you very well could have. Fair I, enough. At a certain point, I was like, there's five buttons. I know there's more than five <laughs> notes. Like, this ain't it. <laughs> there's more going on here. Interesting. Okay. So we do piano for a while. Uh, I assume that's like mostly like classical piano. Like, you're not really playing cool music yet. Exactly. It's normal piano stuff. Whatever, whatever my teacher deemed necessary for me to learn, okay. which was, yes, was mostly classical and you're jazz a good kind school of boy getting up and doing your little recitals. Exactly. That's beautiful and adorable for Tiny Sam to be in his little <laughs> Yes. Recital. Uh, sorry, I'm giving you a hard time here about sport piano. Uh, we take years off. In the time off, are you like starting to listen to metal, or is it like still like more normal people music? I want to say I got into metal probably maybe six months to a year before I ended up picking up guitar. Okay. So I, I was getting into metal like 2009-ish, like Avenged Sevenfold, Slipknot, like that kind of stuff, and uh, it all just kind of segued from there. Dude, I just discovered Slipknot like last week. <laughs> That's really? So crazy. <laughs> I like obviously I've known it my whole life, but just somehow just never spent more like I know the big songs and like just never got into it. And then last week I was looking for video references and I found the video for I think it's before I forget, where it's like it's before they have shown their faces without masks. So it's like masks and like close up to their forearms and like all these like like teasing details of like almost their face, but not their face. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, oh, this is pretty cool. <laughs> <And just laughs> Maybe why- I should check this band that everyone else knows out it's all my friends favorite bands and i've never given the a biggest metal world. band in the world you know no big deal <laughs> turns out they're pretty good <laughs> turns out they got a couple bangers there so i'm one or two up. one or two yeah so i'm catching up to like nine-year-old sam here yeah, yeah. slow and steady beautiful okay uh we get into guitar is uh acoustic guitar is i assume what you got to learn on no, I, I actually jumped straight into electric. Beautiful. Okay, yeah. so there's music in the house. So there was like, yeah, they were already playing cool stuff. For the most part, yeah. Um, I, I tried to teach myself like the basics as I was going along, like going through the book my parents got me. And after about two weeks, I was like, screw this. I'm just looking I'm at the tabs. Right yeah, I'm looking at the tabs. <laughs> I'm playing like Avenged and Slipknot at the time. And from oh, there... Yeah. Went into like asking Alexandria, bless the fall, and the goats. Oh yeah, oh, all yeah. the goats. Hell yeah! So then it's all self-taught from there. Where you're mostly like, yeah, teaching yourself. It's like in your bedroom. Is this like, do you have friends you're going to band practice with? Like, what is the? I did not know other musicians until I graduated high school. Damn. Yeah, that's fascinating. I uh, I don't watch a ton of movies. This is a segue that to me ties back. I don't watch a ton of movies, and that's always been like a like uh, a criticism I have of myself of like, I think if I'm creating visual art, I should also be consuming visual art and the art the stuff I watch is like on YouTube. Like I want, yeah, whatever yeah. bullshit. And to me, it's like, that's not where the best filmmakers are. Like there's plenty of talent on YouTube. And I would argue that whoever is making the new Batman is like a way better person. Like, whoever the Michael Jordan is of film is in Hollywood somewhere. 
I would argue that I should then be consuming Hollywood and like trying to ingest this stuff and like be able to yeah reference it in my brain and have it accessible. Uh, but I, I get that, but I would disagree with you a little bit because I think if you you're mostly working in a medium where you're releasing podcasts on YouTube, music videos on YouTube, that is your kind of form, and it's a very different form than Hollywood. And some of those things that do make those people quote unquote better than mm-hmm. some of these people might actually make you worse at this other thing. Hundred percent. You I, know, I, people I on YouTube don't necessarily want to see. 10 minutes of artsy shots before the actual video starts. You know what I mean? 100%. In a movie, that's one thing, but... And there's also something to be said for consuming too much content and losing originality. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of where I was circling back to, is that, yes, Jake, I agree with you. Like, that is kind of my justification myself, is that ultimately that's what I'm producing, and, like, I do think that comes out where it's, like, music videos to me have to start quick. This whole, like, long intro thing, like, we gotta be real careful that we are doing something here because attention's, yeah, we're not signing up to watch the whole thing. We're watching the first 10 seconds, and if we don't like those, fuck we're the next. watching something else. Yeah, we're finding <laughs> something we do like. Um, so 100% that shows through. My criticism there is like, or the flip side also to me is like, now whatever I'm making is mine. Like, it is as purely mine as possible because there is nothing else. And I'm thinking of, yeah, you making music kind of in, in a vacuum for most of your young life. It's a really fascinating trait there of like, yeah, you became whatever Sam wanted to be. Like, there wasn't a, uh, I feel like in bands probably there's like a, a domineering figure in some bands where you're in high school, you join the band, and there's one guy who's a dick who's like, this is what yeah. we sound like. This is what we sound like. And that guy, I feel like, would fuck up everything. And to have, like, a really, like, pure and unfiltered, like, yeah, version of that growing up, I feel like it's a really valuable foundation for you as a musician to, like, find your voice and figure out who Sam is and not who the, yeah, how to please the dickhead guy who's, this is what we sound like kind of thing. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I, I was just doing what I wanted to do, taking in the influences that I enjoyed and yeah. not letting anybody else affect that. And I think that helped a lot when I joined this band mm-hmm. and uh, and pretty much immediately got into helping with the writing process and all of that. So I think that was very helpful. There's a, a quote by Charles Bukowski, who's like a really like, I feel like he was like an alcoholic, like drug addict kind of guy who was a writer and like kind of a brilliant poet, but also probably not the perfect <laughs> representation of a man. Cheers to that. <laughs> uh, but he has this thing about how isolation is a gift. And it's that exact idea of like, by being left alone, we can yeah explore the things we want, and once the world starts to get involved in it, now we're starting to like shape it a little bit. Uh, and I try and keep that in mind. Is yeah, I'm working in my apartment all day. It's like there, it is a gift. It is a gift that I can just be here all day, and this is what I have to focus on, and worry about, and figure out how to make this thing better, yeah. uh, and not be I don't know influenced by the world too much there. And I feel like yeah, growing up independently is a, a beautiful thing. It also seems like it'd be super scary then to join the band to then like throw away that isolation and be like, all right, guys. Here is me, and like, there's a vulnerability in sharing ideas and critiquing ideas, and like, it seems like a really scary step to do later in life. Looking back at it, it's crazy too, because I was a very anxious person. So, jumping into that, I don't know how I got myself to do it, but I think I just kind of said, "We're doing it now. Do- doesn't Good matter what the outcome is," Good and and jumping into it, uh, it was pretty seamless, honestly. Like first few shows, I pro- I'm sure I was probably shitting a brick before I got up there, but. As time went on, you get used <laughs> to it. Not the brick that he likes. No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but as time goes on, it gets easier. You get used to it. And uh, now I love being on stage. Hell yeah. How did you uh, first link up with the guys? So I knew our original drummer, Austin. Uh, we were both homeschooled. So Shout out. Shout out. Uh, like, like by your parents or was it like a community homeschool thing? Uh, it was kind of both. We it was, There was a community that we would meet up like once twice a week Interesting. so yeah that's how i ended up getting in touch with him and uh he had originally formed this band with some of the other guys and caleb and uh that was my ticket in interesting yeah. so another yeah another homeschooler brought you out of the wing <laughs> yes like, sir we're gonna do this yeah hell yes and thankfully it stuck for you absolutely yep been here ever since <laughs> <laughs> loving every second beautiful uh and then getting on stage feels like yeah what is the process of like getting comfortable on stage like where again that seems like a whole nother layer of this thing of like i've played music in my room now i gotta play it to these four guys and hope they like it now i gotta play it in front of probably also four guys again (laughs) yeah exactly more than four guys but yeah what is that process like oh man i mean i'm sure at first it was what's the first show first show oh the space beautiful Uh, yeah i think i think my first three shows were all at the space hell yeah <laughs> I is... could not tell you who they were with. There were a handful of bands. That's but <laughs> yeah, right. 
<laughs> we were sharing Etsy and Sin stories. Sorry, I was sharing Etsy and Sin stories. Sam said nothing bad. Sam's a beautiful person, a nicer person than I. <laughs> I was saying some fun things. Um, I guess I could say it on here. Yeah, that's a little too crazy. But my friends toured with them. Uh, I toured with him. Uh, and it's always stuck out to me as like just the high watermark of like crazy things bands do of like you sign up for shows. Uh, I was talking about how I can like choose the songs I work on a little bit more now, but yeah. sometimes, yeah, you don't always get to work on your favorite songs and being in a band is somewhere thing of you get open for bands. And there must be times where you go, who the, how the fuck is this person? And he seems like the high watermark of like the, who the fuck is this yeah. kind of moment. Um, yes, the space, beautiful place for shows. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I love it. <laughs> it was a great place. Uh, but yeah, as far as getting used to that, I'm sure at first it was it was more of a process of just trying to tune out all the people that are watching and just imagining I'm in my room again, just jamming songs. As time goes on, it's almost more fun to see all the people that are there and yeah. seeing how they're moving and, and feeding off the energy from the crowd. It makes you, you've earned them at this point, which I yes. think is part of the, the satisfaction there. I'm always curious of like, joining a band that is in arenas right now would be such a bizarre thing of like you get the high of the arena but it's not quite I didn't this though yeah i just kind of well maybe they did maybe they put in years of work before they, they got did to earn that it. point they did exactly. in a certain yes. sense but it's a different kind of thing yeah and i'm always i don't want to say they didn't but it's different i think this is part of my like going from photo into more video. It's like, I feel like with a music video, like I feel like I've earned the merits of whatever comes of the video. With photo, there is some degree of like, you're only as big as the band you're attached to in that time period. Yeah. And that was always weird to me of like, I'm going to end up in an arena going, uh, <laughs> why am I here? And yeah. It is a similar thing. Like I did earn, I put in the years to be qualified for that position. That is earning it to a degree, but it feels much less personal to me. And yeah. much, whereas this video thing is like, it is exactly what I make it, for better or worse. And, like, yeah, yeah. maybe that means it never gets off the ground, but it's, like, it is mine. It is 100% mine. Yeah. It's everything I make it. And I can, to some degree, take credit for every ounce of it. And it is still fan-based. If I did a Bring the Horizon video, it's still going to get more views than a not Bring the Horizon video. But yeah. also, like... But you get to choose, you know, what bands it's based on. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can be like, nah, actually, I don't want to work with you. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> in, in, a the world. <laughs> in a perfect world, in a perfect world, which we are always aspiring towards. Um, hell yes, I feel like we have wrapped up a lot of what I would like to cover today. Uh, my last two things I like to chat, chat, touch upon here that I always forget about. Uh, one is what are we currently learning? Uh, so this show to me is started with the idea of learning something from everyone, uh, and it's always about this music thing. And the more I've done the show, the more I realize like. There's so much outside of the music piece of us that we never share, we never talk about, never makes it into the TikToks and Reels. Like, what is a, a hobby that we're currently invested in? What is something outside of music that we're spending time doing? Uh, yeah, what is something that is on the, the cutting edge of our brain that is not music-related right now? Uh, you might have to come back to me because I am learning something, but it is music-related. What, what is yeah. it? I'm getting into other genres. I'm, uh, Hell yes. I'm okay. doing, doing a little stuff behind the scenes, pro like learning producing a little bit. Hell yes. Uh, a bunch of little fun things. I've been so attached to metal for so long that it's nice to break into something a little fresh. Does that like free you up? Like, what's what's the benefit to me of getting out of metal there? It's just feeling the creativity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just just scratching that itch. Uh, I've always listened to music outside of metal too. So being able to create outside of that space as well as we're is, talking like rap beats. Sam music. and indie boy. Sam and indie. I boy. like a little indie. He makes pop. good beats too, but he an indie boy. Yeah, Sam cooking some indie over there. A little bit of everything. I, I, I experiment with some EDM, a little hip hop, but yeah, indie. I, I love listening to some indie. Hell yes. Uh, I was having a chat last week. Uh, Living Weary was on, and they were talking about how they do open mics, and the open mics for them is like a way just to get stage time and just like practice being on stage and being in front of people. Is there a similar benefit here to like writing other genres that makes you better when you come back to make the next No Eyes Scene record? I th I enjoy taking uh, different things that I like from those genres and bringing it back, whether it's a chord progression or like a melody, a rhythm, something, anything, and taking it into that into the metal genre and exploring that and yep. expound like expanding on that idea. Hell yes! What's the what's the goal? We got a side project happening. What's what's blossoming? What's in the works? We're not sure yet. I don't know if I can okay. talk about anything yet. But, but uh, secret. Yeah. Fair enough. Hell yeah. So it's very exciting to watch that come together. Yeah. I, I, yeah, that's fun. I think for me, yeah, I get to make videos through different mediums. And I think that's always a weird part of being in a band is like you end up making things one way for so long. Yeah. 
that you don't get the luxury. Whereas for me, I think something I really enjoy is that, yeah, every month I get to try a new flavor of music and a new yeah, yeah. camp and a new style of work and it all kind of varies and keeps it refreshing for me in a way that I think with a band sometimes may get a little bit, yeah, more routine or more comfortable. That's worth breaking out of. Absolutely. Jake, what you got for me? What you cooking on lately? Bro, I got nothing non-musical for you, but I've been getting really good at country guitar. Country guitar. I hate country, but people have been asking me to play country guitar for them, so I've been learning it anyway. It's, I got a slide that I've been playing. That's the glass shit. thing you watch it? I got a metal one, but yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Same thing. It's just they make them out of different material. Hell yes. That's all I've been doing. Is this mostly studio work? Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. So you've also, yeah, for context here, I've been working in the studio with Sean uh, doing, like, co-writes, co-production? Uh, exactly it it the... depends what he needs help with on any given day, you know? Sometimes it's just come in and put a guitar lead on it, because you can probably do a better guitar lead than me. Sometimes it's, you know, we got drums in, and you need to set up mics and this and that. You know, whatever he needs help with, I'll Beautiful. go through and help with him. Beautiful. I would love to have that for my business. I one of the goals of the business is to be able to like employ as many friends as possible. And I would love yeah. to be able to do that and like bring people in. It's like, okay, let's yeah, bring more people yeah, into the umbrella yeah, and for sure. help help more people pursue what they want to do. And ultimately that money goes back into music and back into yeah, yeah. whatever it needs to go into. So it would be yeah, that's the long term goal of mine. Uh beautiful. What does learning country guitar look like? <laughs> like is it uh, just listening to Tim McGraw all day and No, I don't listen to any country music. How do you at learn all? country guitar? I just that? have random country guitarists on Instagram that I've started following and they'll play licks. And I'll just be like, all right, I'm gonna learn that lick now. And I'll learn. So I literally have no experience listening to any country, but I know the licks. And if someone <laughs> asks me to do it, I'll be like, yeah. I'll and it's like, okay, sure, whatever. But I, no, I've not listened to a single Tim McGraw song, and I don't <laughs> plan on it. That sounds <laughs> insane. Yeah, it's it's like all spice and no substance. Yeah, yeah. Literally, it's all the spice. Well, that's the thing. I'm not going in and writing these songs from the jump. <laughs> I'm putting the spice on. I'm getting paid to be a guitarist on it. So it's like, I don't need to write the chord progression and the melodies. I just got to pull up and... <laughs> and it's like, okay. You're a sprinter, not a marathon runner. Yeah! But it's just so funny to be like, yeah. <laughs> it's just a funny little niche to be in. Yeah. Like, I'd, for country would, music. I would well. never have... Predicted that's where I would have ended up Jason Richardson doing, of country. Hell yeah. We That'd love be that. Sick. That That'd rules. Be sick. Jason Richardson, a young gravy had a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and then he played country. <laughs> Isn't gravy getting into country? Am I crazy? I think that's I think that's happening. I got to I, see. I heard his last album was a country album, but I didn't listen to it because I was like, I don't want to hear it. That seems shocking. You chose I, not to hear that. Yeah. I, <laughs> How could anyone not want to listen to Young Gravy? Young Gravy country? doing country. Yeah. Literally. I, I was don't know. privileged enough to uh, work one of his shows last year. It was pretty incredible. Pretty special, talented guy. Um, seemed so charismatic. That's what I'm all like when I'm struck at whenever I uh, yeah. see people like him, people of his level. It's like, oh, yeah, I get why. Like, I, yeah. it's so bizarre. He's, he's an entertainer. I'm not going to sit there and say he's the best musician ever. I'm sure a lot of that is producers behind the scenes, but that man is a true entertainer. You can get by on charisma like yeah, so far. Yeah. It's so shocking far. how far charisma gets you and how 100%. undeniable it is for someone mm -hmm. like him where it's like, yeah, yeah I'm not his demographic. Like I'm not yeah. the person that he was there trying to impress. But it was still like, oh, that guy's got it. And yeah. like, it's not for me, but like undeniably, like I am no longer confused about why this guy is famous. Yeah. Like for a while with people like him, there's some like sense of like, how the fuck did he make it? This could have been anyone. It could have been. And then you no, see him and it's it like, no, it literally yeah. could only have been him. There is something unique to that that is, yeah, just bizarre to me. It's like an intangible. It's like we all can recognize it, but we can't define it. We can't begin to coach it or teach it, but no. it is so recognizable when it's seen. You know it when you see it, but yeah, definitely. Hell yes. Beautiful Kings. We did it a little shorter one today, but that is A-OK. -okay. We got an album to go promote. Uh, let's go make some TikToks while we got some <laughs> yeah, time here. There we go. Over. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, before I let you get out of here, where can people find the music? Where can people find you guys on social media? Yes, Jake, I'll put you on the spot here. Uh, uh, where do people find the streaming info? Uh, so look up No I Has Seen on Spotify. You'll find all the old singles. By the time this is out, The Cavern will be out uh, on Facebook, Instagram. We have a Twitter. We don't really use it much, but we have it. So it exists. We'll, we'll post The Cavern <laughs> on there, too. If that's your thing, you can find it. But, Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, everything is out. Album is out. Uh, you said this January Al Yeah, 10th? January 10th. January 10th. Beautiful. January 10th, uh, The Cavern, or sorry, the album, the Impermanence album. Yeah. Yes. With The Cavern on it. <laughs> With The Cavern on it. Plenty of singles here. Uh, beautiful. Yes, Jake, where can they find you on social media? Where can they tell you that you did awesome today? Uh, I'm just Jay Mills on social media with four Zs. Beautiful. You can go look that up and 
like a video of me playing guitar and say, wow, you're so great. Wow. So great. Yeah. Uh, vote for Jake in the upcoming election, by the you way. You should. <laughs> Jake, Jake is you our guy. You should. I would support that. Write him in. Yeah. <laughs> Write him in. Yeah, Jay's next. Uh, <laughs> Sam, where can people find you on social media? We're going to tell you you did awesome today. I am Sam N-E-H-S uh, everywhere as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, or X, whatever it's called now. Whatever uh, the fuck. Uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. Whatever the Elon Musk app is. Like a picture of me <laughs> or an old video of me playing bass that nobody cares about. Hell yeah. Like the oldest video of Sam that you can find. Yes. I'll if you can find Sam with his old haircut back in the day, like that. And give it a comment. And give it a comment so it goes back up in the feed and more people can see let it. Me sh- let me know if I should bring it back. I think he should. <laughs> Episode 82 <laughs> from everyone. We've ended with a mission here, boys. Get it done.